We're on location and we're beyond the scenes with Eva LaRue and she's answering some up close and personal questions. What is the most challenging aspect of your profession? Finding a balance between reality and surreality, <laughs> if that is a word. People are allowed to, in my industry, behave abominably. I think, in my opinion. People said no to them for so long as they were trying to break into the business that the second they broke into the business, they started taking it out on everybody and being as horrific as the people were to them as they were trying to get into the business. And the egos come out and they never get smacked down and, and there's no uh, real place in the world for that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, I hear my friends from time to time talk about how they come out here to visit in LA and after being here for a week they need to go do, you know, like an exfoliation scrub because they feel like they've got to scrub LA off of them. Yeah. It's all about like where you go and where you hang out and who you hang out with and what you're wearing and what handbag you're carrying and what you're driving and, and la 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 la. And the reality is life has nothing to do with any of that. Life has to do with your best, closest friends that have been your friends for 25 years. Right. It has to do with um, the people that you would have into your home and come over every weekend and that you hang out with. It has to do with your children and, and, and the people that, that you love and give the most to. And we get led along the garden path in, in this town in terms of, oh, hang out with those people because they're cooler and they're better yeah. or they're perceived to be cooler. And the reality is they're not. No. So you just have to keep your head about you in this business and sometimes it's tough to do. What question do you get asked the most? You know, the question that I get asked the most on the red carpet is how I deal with the verbiage on our show. Do you understand what you're saying? Do you have any clue what you're saying? Were you into science before this? Did you follow criminology beforehand? All no, the answer to all of those in a word is no. And I've learned so much being on the show, but that's the question that I get asked the most. It is sometimes like speaking in Japanese because I have absolutely no clue what I'm saying, but we've got technical advisors that are on the set all the time, walking us through every step of the way, every science, project that we're working the on, procedures every amazing. procedure, yeah. every you know crime scene investigation that we're actually doing, we have to do everything to protocol. So it's been an amazing learning curve there. But at the same time, there are days you go and you go, what does this mean? <laughs> yeah. What does this say? And how do I pronounce it? I feel like I'm back in the first grade. <laughs> eh, p, p, f, and it's like this long, the word. Right. And then you've got to say it like you, you've known it. Like since. you've been saying it for 30 years. Yeah. So, yeah. So I would say that's the question I get asked the most. Tell us some of your favorite mottos or sayings. I am a favorite motto and saying collector. I love them. I keep a journal of all my favorite quotes and things that people give me, things that I run into over the years, and I refer back to them all the time. And one of my favorite ones is, um, I just jotted it down, the end of all exploring will be to arrive where we started and know the place for the first time. That's quoted in my movie. Is it really? T.S. Eliot. T.S. Eliot. Yeah, T.S. Eliot. That's my other. I love it. But this is a story. It's not so much a motto. It's more of a parable. Okay. And I keep this on my refrigerator because I just think it's so beautiful. So this is a Cherokee parable. And it goes, one evening an old Cherokee told his grandson about a battle that goes on inside people. He said, son, the battle is between two wolves. One is evil. It is angry, envy, regret, greed, arrogance, self-pity, guilt, lies, false pride, superiority, and ego. The other is good. It's joy, peace, love, humility, kindness, empathy, generosity, truth, compassion, and faith. The grandson thought for a minute and he asked, well, which one wins the battle? And the old Cherokee simply replied, the one you feed. Ooh, I got chills. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Isn't that a great parable? Yeah, the one you feed. The one you feed.